Good evening, and you're very welcome as you join us once again for a time of nightly online prayer for the season of Lent, where we're going to read and reflect on a psalm together, and out of that, pray for God's blessing on our community and our world. Tonight, we're going to be uh, reading Psalm 56, so if you have a Bible or a Bible app, you may want to get that open now. To begin, we're going to light a candle, and if you have one at home, then you can join in by lighting yours at the same time as me here. We light this candle as a symbol of light in the darkness, of Jesus, the light of the world and our living hope. A visible reminder that he, by his Holy Spirit, is present with us now. As I enter prayer now, I pause to be still to breathe slowly, to recenter my scattered and anxious thoughts upon the presence of God. Dear Father, as I offer myself to you for these moments tonight and throughout this season of Lent, help me to turn away from my own small, self-centred view of the world and to see your view of me and of your world. I invite you to reshape my soul and ask you to help me respond to the world and people around me with your compassion. Amen. Now, if you have your Bible uh, or Bible app, um, then I please turn to Psalm 56 um, and let's keep an eye on it before we read it together. I'm going to be reading tonight from the Message Translation and I've included a link uh, to that text along with this video if you would prefer to follow that or you can read whatever English version you have uh, in front of you. So uh, here we have uh, yet another song by David. He's a prolific psalm writer. And one that we know from the historical record was written to express his emotions, thoughts and prayer for God's rescue from a very specific situation. When the Philistines had seized him in Gath, the title tells us referring to an incident when David was a rebel leader before he became king during the reign of King Saul, who was hunting uh, David and his followers, uh, hunting them down to, to end their lives. David had fled to take refuge in the foreign neighbouring kingdom of Philistia, but he wasn't welcome there either. Caught between a rock and a hard place could be a more catchy song title for this psalm. Now, as I read at, at through and meditated on this psalm, the, the thing that jumps out to me listening to David's lyrics is that it's important to get our fears in the right order and perspective. It's important to get our fears in the right order and perspective. What do I mean by that? Well, we all have fears, don't we? And the way to deal with them, to come out from under their oppression, is to have something or someone else over and above them. Old time religion used to talk a lot about uh, the fear of God. In our more progressive times, we've put less emphasis on fearing God and more on loving him which I have to say isn't a bad thing, because the Bible tells us unequivocally that above all else, God is love. God isn't fear, God is love. That's who he is, that's his nature. Everything God does for the human race, for you and me, is motivated by his love 
for us. But God is not a cuddly teddy bear. He is the almighty creator of galaxies, stars and planets. From our more than ant-like point of view, he has awesome, fearsome power and we should never, ever disrespect him or his authority, even though he is the best father we could ever have. And when we can learn, and I think it's a lifetime lesson, to see and to consciously put God above our earthly fears, then we can live a uh, life not free from fear, because fear is part of life, but not have those fears dominate, define and disable us. David was learning, or probably at least remembering this lesson for himself, uh, when caught in literal fear for his life, terror of losing his life in Philistia. I wonder if you've learnt this lesson or maybe need a refresher. Are you caught between a rock and a hard place uh, at the moment and living in fear? David feared for his life, as verse 6 tells us. He discovered that the answer to that fear was to trust in God who is greater than the things or people causing his anxiety. David had been captured by the Philistines in Gath. It must have been a terrible experience, as David puts it uh, in, in the message translation here. He was kicked around, stomped on every day and beaten up. Yet in the midst of it all, he trusted in God. When I get really afraid, I come to you in trust. I'm proud to praise God, fearless now. I trust in God. What can mere mortals do? There are times in our lives when we come under attack. It could be spiritual attack, or maybe attack from other people at work, from neighbors or from further afield. In the current climate of pandemic, it could just be the daily bombardment of COVID death statistics that undermines your peace and causes you to be afraid. Whatever the cause of fear in your life, like David, put your trust in God. As he says in verse 11, in God I have put my trust and confident reliance, I will not be afraid. This psalm ends on a note of uh, triumph and deliverance. You have delivered me, David writes in verse 13. David thanks God for setting him free. And I love the way the message translation uh, concludes David's uh, words here, translated from the Hebrew that David wrote into to English. God, you did everything you promised, and I'm thanking you with all my heart. You pulled me from the brink of death, my feet from the cliff edge of doom. Now I stroll at leisure with God in the sunlit fields of life. How lovely in the midst of a place of fear that David is able to be at peace and to say, such things. Let's um, read that psalm together now. I, as I say, I'm going to read it in the message translation, but you uh, may want to read it uh, as, as I do in the translation you have in front of you. Take my side, God. I'm getting kicked around stomped on every day. Not a day goes by, but somebody beats me up. They make it their duty to beat me up. When I get really afraid, I come to you in trust. I'm proud to praise God, fearless now. I trust in God. What can mere mortals do? They don't let up. They smear my reputation and huddle to plot my collapse. They gang up 
sneak together through the alleys, they take me by surprise, wait their chance to get me. Pay them back in evil, get angry God, down with these people. You've kept track of my every toss and turn through the sleepless nights. Each tear entered in your ledger, each ache written in your book. If my enemies run away, turn tail when I yell at them, then I'll know that God is on my side. I'm proud to praise God, proud to praise God. Fearless now, I trust in God. What can mere mortals do to me? God, you did everything you promised, and I'm thanking you with all my heart. You pulled me from the brink of death, my feet from the cliff edge of doom. Now I stroll at leisure with God in the sunlit fields of life. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the many times in my life when I have been afraid and have called on you for help and you have delivered me. Thank you that each tear that I cry in a place of fear and anxiety has been entered in your ledger, each ache written in your book. Lord, thank you for your love in the midst of our fear. Help me to always remember that there is no fear that towers over me that is not already and always under your feet. Today, I call on you for help with the fears that I am currently facing. Please help me to trust in you to deliver me. Giving us God's instruction, Isaiah says, say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. So Lord, tonight I also pray for others as well as myself. I pray for, for those who either do not know or have never realised that you are a God who rescues and saves and is with them in the midst of fear. Please, Lord, would you show me someone who is struggling with fear, who has, as Isaiah puts it, a fearful heart, that I can help either with my words, my resources or my prayer. In this time of enforced isolation that magnifies many fears, I pray for those who are afraid for their future because they have lost their job or worse, maybe their partner. As you help me to deal with my fears, Lord, help me to be a comforter and an encourager of others too. Amen. Let's draw our prayers together by saying the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us uh, again this evening. Uh, once again, please tell your friends about this opportunity for evening prayer. And please tune in again at 7 p.m. tomorrow night when Michael is going to take us through Psalm 57. Tonight I'm going to finish with the words of an old Gaelic blessing. May the road 
rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your fields, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen.